We in the trenches, relax. Welcome to the Trenches Podcast. How much, when you were making a check, right? Obviously, you don't have to say how much. When you're, you know, your month, how much was it percentage-wise, if you want to break it down, or you just want to give raw numbers, were you putting away um, to, like, okay, I have this much, you know, after I pay off everything, I'm going to take this chunk and put it away. Me, personally, I st- I, even during this time, I've still been saving money. Thank God I've been yeah. able to. Um, yeah. from, from me, from my, from my check, my wife's check, cat, uh, I don't want to say that stuff. I don't, you know, haircuts are doing the side. That is all yeah. reportable on my taxes. Everything is on the side. <laughs> yeah, say, are we editing some more shit? <laughs> Hold on Everything is going I have to nothing side. to do with whatever he's talking about. <laughs> don't come looking at my shit. No, no, no. Shout out my tia Lucy. Uh, that was, <laughs> <laughs> that was it. Um, she's the, yeah, but anyways, she's tax guy. she, she, yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm, did that tell you I'm so, I'm, I'm so excited to do my taxes this year, bro? But we'll talk about that later. Wow. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good for you. Um, Good for you. What's it called? So, yeah. Um, yeah, like I said, right now, still putting money away. Um, sometimes, depending on time of the month, depending on how busy it is at work. Now, stuff starting to get a little bit more. The ball starting to roll a lot better, thankfully. So, now that that little piece is now getting a little bit bigger, throwing that to the yeah. side. Eventually, obviously, to use for that is solely put away to make to make money on its own not obviously right now in the bank but once it gets to a certain point do that i still put some money in stocks right now which now is starting to get a little better i don't know if you have noticed too but anyways so yeah for you mine's doing pretty good (laughs) (laughs) my i mean mine's gotten a little bit better over the last but uh i set some triggers up today i'm like once it reaches this i'm selling because i'm done with this I'm done with this. I don't care that AMC is back up to fourteen dollars. I'm just I'm looking at that right now, bro. I don't <laughs> give a shit if movie theaters are opening back up. I know. Whenever the hell they just. I'm getting care. ready to sell AMC. Get me out. I'll take a two hundred dollar loss. You, I'll, I'll sell you mine. <laughs> you can have it under the table. I don't care. Another, IOUs. Another part we got to edit out, Matt. Jesus. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Sorry. No, so <laughs> so yeah. Take, so, so take us back a little bit, bro. When you know, from uh, yeah, I think. I think what you're doing is is good too. Like I think, um, I think you have like when you set up savings goals, and I know it's tough because, and this is why it's tough for me, like as a real estate agent, mm-hmm. because people set these expectations up in their mind of saying, "I'm gonna wait to buy till the market crashes," or they have like these unrealistic things, or right. I need to save up some more money, so I'm, or I'm gonna wait until this whatever event is gonna be, and that event might not be for six, nine, twelve. They they could. They could buy now, but they're choosing to wait six, nine, 12 months. And that always makes me nervous because as we know, like so much can change in six, nine, 12 months, like one emergency, one setback, one, one, anything could set you back. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's super important to like set a savings goal and no matter what, Obviously, if like something huge emergency wise happens, tap into your savings. But like always, so say it's two hundred bucks a week or a month, whatever it is. So say you make a thousand bucks a week, and you're setting off two hundred bucks to the side for savings every every week. You should just live. You should just in your mind set up all your expenses and all your bills to pretending like you make eight hundred bucks a month or eight hundred bucks a week. Mm-hmm. Like that savings is mandatory no matter what. So like you don't make a thousand dollars a week, you make eight hundred dollars a week. So that two hundred is always, always, always going to that side because it's so important, especially like in terms of age, like you being young, like if you if you can ever utilize like compound interest when when we get into like the Roth IRAs and the traditional IRAs mm-hmm. and all that kind of stuff, like the the interest that can be earned from those, um, and and by starting early, like you can legit fund like a Roth IRA and a traditional. I think is uh, six thousand. You can put six thousand dollars a year into it, mm-hmm. and just by just by investing in in regular things, um, it can produce seven to ten percent. So you start at twenty five years old. By the time you could just fund it that six thousand dollars a year, and by the time you're fifty or fifty five, it's over a million dollars. That's crazy. Just just by doing like the bare minimum in terms of that so it's just like setting those savings goals and and making it mandatory that those get put off to the side and and doing whatever you're you're doing with it is is absolutely mandatory and Mm -hmm. so that's that's kind of what i did for myself in the beginning i wasn't doing that though like my dad's really really like he's always he told me since he was you know a teenager he was always just really good at being frugal almost and just like savings and stocks were like his big thing. Like yeah. He loved putting away money and, and like stocks was his big thing. 
And so uh, when I first started, uh, when I was 21 over there, I wasn't saving shit. I was, I was like you where I was before that I was working bullshit factory jobs. I was working at a, I was working at a flavor company at one point, like a <laughs> flavor company that puts like flavors into Skittles and shit, making what 10 bucks an hour or whatever I was making. And so going from that to being an apprentice in a union where I was making, I don't know, $20,000 a year or whatever I was even making mm -hmm. to my first year was 50,000 a year. And then, you know, going on from there. So it's just like double, triple your income within a one year period. So I bought like a, I bought like a suburban my first year, some <laughs> bullshit. I bought yeah. it. <laughs> it was rims with a system. <laughs> I got an apartment in the city. Um, Man, I was rolling on these 24s. <laughs> your boy had no money saved. No money saved. Mm -hmm. um, it was fun. And then, yeah, man, I didn't have a I, Then I sold that car. and I, I did, like, So it was, it was bad for a while. And then, um, I don't know, I think it was right around the time I started buying properties and stuff where I was like, all right, something's got to change. Like, this yeah. isn't fun anymore not having money. This is not fun. Like knowing that i had money like you look at your w2 and you look at your year to date and you're like yeah i see that number but i don't know where where is that too that's because it's it ain't there. my bank account i can tell you that yeah 